This is five on your side at six, focused on you. That was traumatizing for him. He's still shaking up about that to this day. Tonight, a father and his nine-year-old son are recovering after a stolen car crashed into their car during a police chase. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. That crash happened on Tuesday afternoon in North St. Louis. And now the family is expressing frustration about how they were treated after the crash. Five on your side's Megan Kernan joins us in studio with reaction. Megan. Mike, the crash has also prompted a response from the St. Louis NAACP, which is now calling for an end to these high speed chases. And we're hearing tonight from St. Louis police. Once they finally like gained their conscience, they got back on the phone and were yelling they were hit. It was the worst kind of phone call Skylar Steele could have received. Her fiance, Demetrius Haynes Sr., and their son, Demetrius Haynes Jr., suffering from multiple injuries now. Police say a man sped through a red light at the intersection of Page and Goodfellow Boulevards, crashing into the father and son, totaling their black Lexus. I was stunned. He was shaking. Um, I was pretty much traumatized myself. I was so worried about him than me, you know. The driver in the stolen car died at the scene. Police say the passenger in that car took off running. We was looking like we was criminals. The Haynes family says they felt they weren't being treated as innocent bystanders. I reached for the door and prompted open and basically got up on myself and uh, stumbled to the sidewalk and we sat on the side of the curve for a while um, with no medical attention. Within 60 seconds, no later than a minute, were our officers attending to the people that were inside that black Lexus. They were a priority at the scene immediately after we were able to secure that area and make sure that there was no active threat. One thing's for sure, police and the Haynes family want to see the high speed chases come to an end. It's putting everybody else in danger that's innocent bystanders. Uh, we could have lost our life that night. Our officers were trying to stop an already dangerous driver uh, from creating even more of a danger in our community. The NAACP is addressing the deadly police pursuit. They issued this statement saying, quote, we're all concerned about the avoidable dangers and mayhem inflicted on the innocent and the community, especially when the pursuit results in a crash, destruction of property and or physical harm to individuals. They also said it's important to note that these high speed chases are now class D felonies, punishable by a minimum of a year in prison without the possibility of parole or probation. After years of complaints, the St. Louis Public Safety Committee is considering overhauling access to the City Justice Center. Five on your side's Holden Krawicki joins us now in the newsroom with the latest details. Holden, what is behind this push for more access? Well, and it was just two months ago that a judge ordered Sheriff Vernon Betts and Commissioner of Corrections Jennifer Clemens Abdullah to allow attorneys access to their clients inside the City Justice Center. But they told the committee today that nothing has changed. There are currently 680 detainees at the City Justice Center. They are innocent until proven guilty. However, their defense attorneys claim they're not being given the proper access to their clients. It's been well documented and it's gotten to the point where even a judge has given an order. Just this week, I know that the judges were alerted again as to issues that the public defenders and other defense attorneys have had. Um, and it's unsustainable. After hearing these complaints for years, the City Public Safety Committee is considering two ordinances that would guarantee ordained clergy and attorneys access to their clients. Let's be clear why we're here. The St. Louis Justice Center is a cauldron of abuse and civil rights violations. Members of the Public Defender's Office testified that ongoing issues with the Paper Pass Office have denied them the ability to give their clients legal documents. They say, there's a possibility that we are somehow smuggling contraband to our clients via paper, that we have perhaps dipped our paperwork in PCP or some other narcotic or drug. Multiple attorneys also testified that they were denied access to the jail because they had their phone or computer for discovery. These devices are essential to your defense. Though no action was taken by the committee on either ordinance, Attorney Javad Kazali outlined what would happen if changes aren't made. If the jail doesn't change and if this body does not make the jail change, this will play out in one way. And that is with organizations like mine suing the jail and getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars of damages. 
Members of the committee said they invited both Sheriff Betts and Commissioner Clemens Abdullah to respond to these claims today, but they weren't at the hearing. If these ordinances pass, each could be fined up to $500 per denied entry at the City Justice Center. It is the first day of summer and uh, we've been in summer. Certainly feels like that with all these highs in the 90s. Meteorologist Jim Castillo is in for Scott for our weather first forecast. And Jim, just yeah. more and more and more of it. Yes, you know, 94 today and the average high is 87. So here's a look at Arnold, very dry again. There's no rain out there, but let's preview Friday, Saturday and Sunday. About 96 Friday, 98 Saturday and 95 Sunday. Now when you may need your umbrella is early on Sunday morning. So we do have a front headed our way. It's not going to cool us off, but at least we'll have a chance of seeing some rain in here, which we're starting to get dry after we just got out of our drought. So 92 right now feels like 92 because that humidity stayed in check today, about 34%. So the dew point's not too high. That will increase. As you can see, the dew point around the entire area, Chicago 65 dew point, which is higher than us, Columbia, Missouri at about 67 dew point and about 72 dew point in Kansas City. So really muggy air is all around us. So we're going to stay hot and humid. And of course, I'll outline some rain chances in the 10 day forecast coming up. If you need to beat the heat, we've got you covered. Text the word heat to 314-425-5355. We will send a map of cooling centers near you. In just under 30 minutes, the Francis Howell School Board is going to consider some policy and regulation changes that have upset some parents and students. A group of them has gathered outside the administration headquarters for a protest ahead of that meeting. That's where we find Five on Your Side's Laura Barczewski. Laura? Mike, these students and parents are upset about several things on the agenda tonight, including some policy changes to electioneering policies and even human sexuality policies. Now, the, the proposed reg regulation on human sexuality says district employees are not allowed to make, quote, values judgments on human sexuality and shall recommend those students direct those questions to their parents. The policy also goes on to say district employees are not allowed to encourage a student under 18 to, quote, adopt a gender identity or sexual orientation. Students say they're upset about this proposal because school is supposed to be a safe space. People need to feel safe at school, so putting these policies in won't allow students to feel safe enough to express, express themselves or talk to teachers about if they want to talk to a teacher as a safe place because sometimes teacher, um, their parents might not be supportive or teachers might support them better than their parents do. The Francis Howell School Board meeting is set to start at 630 and we'll bring you the latest details coming up tonight at 10. Reporting live in O'Fallon, Laura Barczewski, five on your side. Coming up, extreme heat can really put your kids at risk. The signs you need to watch for under the summer sun. Plus new tech coming to St. Louis Lambert Airport. How the St. Louis County Library can lighten your load. 